The Macabre World Podcast is brought to you by Darker Art Studio, home of real human bone jewelry. Stock and custom pieces are available, so visit us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com and show them your darker art side. Macabre World, a podcast from Darker Art Studio, where we explore the dark, strange, and unusual from this world and beyond. Hello, and welcome to the Macabre World Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Degatti, and I am here with an extremely special guest. With me is my sister, Paula. Hello, Paula. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and Paula is coming to us from Maine. We are diehard New Englanders, uh, both out of our home states of Rhode Island. But the reason Paula is here is because she had the glorious privilege of growing up with me. Well, or I should say <laughs> vice versa. You're the much older one. Um, she's also the one of the few people on the air you'll hear call me Raquel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, I, I grew up, I didn't grow up with you. I grew up before you. Yeah, you, you grew up with me. <laughs> and this is true. That's what I'm saying. I got it wrong. So uh, welcome, Paula, to, to the Macabre World Podcast. And in a conversation the other day, Paula and I realized that we, we, had, we had a great, great show to present to you. Being that we both are of an age, and uh, that we grew up in the 60s and 70s, respectively, we wanted to talk about toys that kill because the toys that we played with, and I know we have people of all ages from all areas of the world that listen to the podcast, and thank you very much for tuning in. The toys that were available to us, and, and you know, the difference between what we see our kids, our friends' kids, you know, pe- what we see kids playing with now. I don't have kids, you have kids. And yeah, well, she's like ancient now, isn't she? My niece. She's old enough to have had her own kids, even though she decided not to, but you know. Okay. The point and, is, and check out yeah. the slide. Paula's a rocking looking <laughs> Nana type, you know. She's, it, it, you know, overall. so you know, let's start mm. with like the playground. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like the lady screaming from the porch going, Kids today, but you know, playgrounds don't seem to have as many kids on them as they used to. But when that was like the epicenter of our social center, and it was filled with horrific machines, absolutely, and, and Made it of metal. was something. Well, this was the kind of equipment that probably the army stopped using because <laughs> somebody reported in that they couldn't treat recruits like that anymore. Or right. back when they went, decided to go co-ed, they just decided that they needed to find different kind of equipment for people to prove themselves on because, you know, there was a chance of actually losing you in basic training rather than combat. They just right. wanted to invest in you. At that point, they didn't want to kill you off. So instead, yet. they handed it to a bunch of second graders and uh, <laughs> figured that was a good idea. But well, we... seriously, I think some of the stuff was the same stuff that uh, that my husband explained that he went through in ranger training yeah. down in Georgia like the, at Fort the Benning. The you, know? you, you go, you have to climb with your arms overhead. That looks like... Well, we had rings. You had rings, to go from yep, one ring to those. the other, you know. And absolutely, I never hated ropes any more than, uh, man, just trying to climb those things at uh, We're the body women. We have the upper now, body strength of a field mouse. Um, yeah. Actually, I used to <laughs> surf, so true. I've got some upper body strength. I just happen to have lower body mass that doesn't <laughs> want my upper body to pull it that far up. Well, yeah, we my lower go body's got its own opinions as well. About don't go vertical. Right. That's that's that. I'm not built for that. None but of us I, are. <laughs> it's genetic. When I think about, you know, when I think about the toys and the the playgrounds and everything that was so dangerous back, you know, it's amazing we all made it into adulthood. But um, the first thing on my radar screen is a Christmas story where he's yelling, you'll put your eye out, is oh, what yeah. mom's yelling, because he wants his Red Rider BB gun, which, right, of sure. course, Ralphie. BB guns were a thing when I was a kid, BB guns and all kinds of stuff. And then um, just to kind of capture the thoughts about what parents were thinking back then, there's a fantastic episode of Mad Men where 
the mother has had her dry cleaning done and the kids come downstairs and the older daughter has put this over the younger son's head and he's basically sucking in the plastic from the dry cleaning. She's taken that, uh, the clothes out and she's put the bag over his head. They're going to play spaceman. And the mother has a fit. Why? Not because he's going to suffocate and it's dangerous, but because her clothes are going to get spoiled because now they're out of the bag. And of yeah. course, you know, she's um chain she put her cigarette she's down to them attend to him. She's got a martini next. <laughs> yes, exactly. Her smokes. But the, the whole the whole the, the whole point of her anger is you've gone and you've wrecked something of mine, not Oh my God! You could kill yourself. No, that was absolutely not the not the not the vibe. Even even into the seventies when I was a kid. In fact, this conversation started on our random phone conversation because you recalled uh, an item called the bathysphere play tent or bathysphere. Yes. How, do you, how do you say that word? Bathysphere. Bathysphere. It's, it's bathysphere. Bathysphere. Yes. Did I say that right? And the, the was... bathysphere play tent. Play tent was actually marketed in 1968 is when it came out. And it was a giant plastic tent that looked like one of those under the sea round things. And it was put out by a company called Chox Vitamins. Do you remember Chox Vitamins? Yes. And you had to send your proof of Chox Vitamins. Plus $1.25. You had to tape five quarters oh, to a postcard goodness. and send it like that. And then you could and go under I the sea with Charlie Chox. quarters to the postcard. Yep. So and um, you would encase your thing. kids in plastic. Yes. And yet well, yet we was, survived. But, and we had but, one, apparently. It, but it was actually, you liked it in there. <laughs> you don't remember because you were was little, really yeah. way too small. But um, Maria and I, uh, Maria being the middle sister, yes. for anybody who doesn't know this already, um, we, we used to spend a lot of time in there. Uh, I think that was a variation of various forts and things that we sure. built. We had that wall in the living room that had built-in bookshelves, built-in desk, and there was a desk drawer with uh, two cabinets flanking it. So um, the well underneath the desk was where we used to, uh, when we were small enough, that was our fort. We would get one of the bathroom towels, put it in the drawer, shut the drawer, and that's it. That was your fort. And, yeah, and, and you had a the bathysphere. Who uses that word now? I mean, can you look well, at like six year old? I want a bathysphere. Who says that? Steampunks. <laughs> right. You know what? That's a very good point. So steampunks, if you're listening, uh, get yourself a bathysphere for your. That's little right. Room. I think if you're a steampunk, you could you could use a bathysphere. Okay. But what it was was supposed to be draped over a card table. Everybody had a card table back then, a thirty six by thirty six inch table. As you do. And these square tables with the retractable legs. We had one. It would come up and down stairs from the basement to the living room as needed. And, it was either the kids' um, table at Thanksgiving. Sometimes mm -hmm. it was the sidebar. Exactly. And so it either but, had like kid food or booze on it. And occasionally right. somebody might play cards. But must they be mutually exclusive? Not in our house. <laughs> no. Mom's going to kill me. Um, so, you know, it, it, it was crazy. Now, you talked about some of these army toys and everything, and we came up with some categories for some of these toys. And and I think the, the that uh, we came up with uh, one of them was general ballistics. There was a lot of oh, yes. toys, and because uh, there were you know again, this is a time when we had cap guns, BB guns, and I did a little research, and cap guns started in the 1860s when everybody was running around with real guns. So wow. You had, you had your cap gun and, you know, I hope, hoping that Doc Holliday doesn't make a mistake, you know. So, <laughs> there and, were a lot of cowboy shows on when I was a that's kid. That's true. Yeah. Your bonanza. And, and you know, Rifleman. people people watching those shows, their kids were watching. It was family shows and people were watching Bat Masterson. They were watching Boomtown. They were watching Roy Rogers. They were watching all kinds of things. Howdy and, doody. Howdy doody. And at least I can say that one was slightly before my time. But oh, yeah. um, I yeah, watched it. Boomtown with Rex Trailer. Oh, wow. And all of those shows really made a, a and I had a cap gun. I remember there were cap guns in, in our, in our I midst. I had a cap gun. I, there was a one around. I remember that. 
and the we, smell uh, of the we cats? used to go really? yeah i used to love the way they smelled actually Did you really yeah oh you i don't know why but well you know <laughs> But I, I did a little research, and approx according to the um, United States Consumer Product Safety Commission, and that's where a lot of these factoids came from. And you can look them up on the right. internet. And calling the uh, toys non-powder uh, weapons, you know, non-powder. Right. right. Per year, there are an average of twenty thousand injuries per year. Uh, uh, with non-powder weapons. And that was uh, quoted in the New York Times in 2004. So some of this is a little old intel, but a lot of these guns have gone out of vogue and stuff like that by the time. Still, uh, that's a lot. 2004, that's late. That's a lot. Guns. And and they average about four fatalities a year. And I, th there was no details on what the fatalities were because I wonder if the fatality could be like, you know, somebody older picks one up and points it at the wrong person who is armed with an actual gun and they that i don't know if that's considered if I, I don't have the details on it but apparently they're dangerous but they were everywhere bb guns were everywhere and and that includes bb, BB guns yes. in in non daisy pump guns. rifles daisy pump right you're gonna we put your eye daisy out. pump rifles we had uh yeah the red rider uh bb, BB gun. gun we yeah. had uh we had one of those didn't that and, have, yeah um, that had a bb gun in the basement for yep. some reason yeah, he and mom used to like shoot, like target shoot for fun with it. Well, that's that's a fun family fact is that <laughs> mom was she had like sniper chops. She really basically. did. She could. They had a, a little range set up where they used to shoot the BB gun. And she she used to dad used to do the William Tell thing with her. He would stand with a cigarette in his mouth and she she'd shoot the um the burning end off of it. How's that for uh <laughs> that sounds way too sexy to be on parents? <laughs> uh that's like sexy or not, she you know, could actually also shoot the tobacco out of a cigarette without disturbing the paper. I remember that. And yeah, I have I don't a true know, story. something like 50 feet or something. Right. Yeah. It's some crazy thing. Well, it should be said that um, our mom is still alive. Um, we haven't handed her a weapon recently. We probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> and uh, she uh, but she I remember when we were kids, we went to um, Gaslight Village up up near Fort Ticonderoga in Lake George, New York. Every right. summer um, we were schlepped up to Lake George. And um, and I think all of us uh, now have a, a, a pure aversion to James Fenimore Cooper. But um, we went up to Lake <laughs> George and we'd go to this. There was a big amusement park called Gaslight Village and it was cowboy themed. And it was actually kind of fun. I, I remember enjoying Gaslight Village, actually. But there was right. one of those, those carnival games where they have the star and you can shoot the BB. You have to shoot out all of the star. And I right. will forget. I'm, I'm all of know, six, seven. And mom picks Not up the even. BB yep. gun and sights it. And she just kind right. of cocks her head and she goes, hmm, sights are off. And there's my mom, like she's putting her purse, you know, she puts down her purse and then she picks up the yeah. BB gun. Here, hold this. Here, hold right, my purse. Me. You know, right. and she's like, hmm, sights are off. And so she kind of makes a couple of little like adjustments and she proceeds to Terminator, that star right out of the paper. And she's like, you get to pick a toy. And the guy's looking <laughs> at her. I'm looking at her and I'm just like, what happened? And then, you know, next thing I'm yeah. walking away with a big I remember off. that look. He's like, oh, here comes some mother with yeah. the kids, right? She's like, here, hold my handbag. <laughs> and after after like shooting maybe one off and figuring out where how how far off it was, yeah. She just Yeah, she the did. He's looking at her and she kicked ass. He's like, you know, going like <laughs> Yeah. Grabbing the the the, the pulley and Grabbing the star, and I and, think yeah. you know you get to keep the star as well as get the biggest bear in the back row. Right, you know the giant. <laughs> remember the giant stuffed dog? That's where that came from. The Brian Snoopy uh -huh. dog. That's where that came That's from. That's right. That's so, right. So you know, we, we had BB guns, and we had and, and paramilitary toys were kind of a thing. I mean, we're, we're three girls, so there wasn't like you know scads of army men. We didn't have a lot of the for for lack of and, and don't write me letters. Boy toys. And, you know, but uh, we did, you know, there were more toys were paramilitary uh, than I thought. And you brought up an excellent point in our previous conversation about the most deadly thing. Before it was deadly to step on Legos, you didn't want to step on a jack. Oh, my God. Those things. Yeah. You take those designed. things and you just enlarge them. 
and what you have are anti-tank um, devices. Tank stuff. That's right. What do we, hedgehogs? Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs. You got it. So for any of you That's military right. folks out there, if you look at the little quote unquote innocent game that children used to play by bouncing a ball and picking, and it hurt to pick them up. You couldn't grip them too tight because then it felt like no. you were crucified. You know, it was just, they would just, who just, you know, let's get some really tiny, pointy, sharp toys and give them to our children. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is because we, we were brought up, I mean, let's put it this way. I was born at the very end of the 1950s. And back then they weren't as concerned, I guess, if toys could kill you because everybody was making spares. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) Much larger families, we had spare kids (laughs) and this was the baby boom. And I guess they figured "Ah, if they lost a couple along the way, they'd be fine. But um, interestingly enough, (laughs) a fact I found from about Jax is they go as far back as ancient Greece. Wow, that's that's a that type of game and Asia like they they were concurrently playing similar games, and 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 this is for all you darker art studios fans. The um, preferred uh, item, obviously, they didn't have the little metal things. Were bones and typically wolf mm-hmm. or or small animal bones, and they either use the talus, which is the outer piece of the ankle that sticks out, the one you bang on the bedpost, right. or uh, the calcaneus, which is the bottom of your heel. Mm-hmm. And those were the bones that that they would they they found you know when they did all these archaeological digs and, and they found that the those types of games had uh, animal bones and you know all kinds of stuff like that. So Jack sure had been injuring children for millennia. <laughs> yeah, and that kind of we thing. had slingshots. Oh yeah, and boomerangs, wrist rockets. Right, right. Slingshots, and somebody in the neighborhood boomerangs. had a potato gun. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The potato gun. The potato wow. gun. And, and I remember yeah. some one of our neighbors, I think, got, got one of their windows in the car cracked from that. I had nothing to do I, with it, thankfully. The potato I, gun was kind I of out of vogue. But. One of the toys that, that uh, crosses the line between ballistics and water hazards is um, the, the super water blaster toys, those those water gun toys, where you, you, uh, you know, they, they're, they pack a punch. Well, yeah, you're fire hosing your friends. It's, Actually, it's a little rough. My daughter goes to gatherings, and she has a dog, and so do three quarters of the people at these gatherings. And occasionally, there are dog fights, and she's found that if she keeps a water blaster on hand, it's a really good way to stop a dog fight without getting hurt. Because if the two dogs get water blasted onto them, they'll stop. Yeah, it startles. And she them. also figured out it works. Out, it works for men too. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, we should also point Ooh. out that, that she really does have a unique way of seeing the world. She's a quite clever girl, your, your daughter. But, you know, it, it's... She's a, an alternative MacGyver. <laughs> she really is. She really is. You guys are pretty clever She knows clever how to make everything there. work. <laughs> but, you know, so... And she knows how to do it on a budget. Also pointy and dangerous. And it's a classic. I know that everybody listening thought this was going to be first on the list, but I wanted to ease in. I wanted to kind of lubricate you first before we went right into lawn darts. We have ah, the lawn darts. The lawn darts. And and in our our case, they you know they were they were the original lawn darts with metal pointy tips and exactly. And, uh, they were also called jarts. That was the the trade name. Right. That's the one that we had. We had jarts and javelin and darts. Is I think where they name. were. They they were basically like real bar you know adult darts that you would play in a pub they weighed a lot they were they were they were were like 20 times the size version of a pub dart they were they were they were like a foot a foot or foot and a half foot or 18 inches long they were big and they were heavy what were they thinking giving us these things i think dad just really wanted to air aerate the lawn Maybe <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I can. Well, I do also it's know mature. the other landscaping use of 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 the jarts slash lawn dart game was there was a small hula hoop that was probably you know only about twenty inches in di- diameter. It wasn't actually like wiggle hula hoop sized. It was small, right. and you were supposed to like you know toss that, and that was your target. And you went and backed up from it and tried to get the darts to land in the in the hoop on on the ground. Um, our uncle. Exactly. Who who was something of a Da Vinci with the hedges, um, stole 
the lawn dart hula hoop and used it to uh, evenly trim the Japanese ewes uh, that went up the driveway. That's right. He used it as a guide for a long time. He used it as his We're template there going, to, to trim the hedges. What happened? Did you steal this? No. It was yeah, actually you know, Uncle it, Lenny who stole it. Was it. Next, yeah, mm-hmm. Uncle Lenny stole the, stole the thing. But um, when I looked up, tried to get a, I can't get an exact number of the injuries for lawn darts because they are still available, but they are not the same. They are now, and I, if you look, if you guys look up lawn darts, like on Amazon or any place you would buy them presently, sure. they're going to look what I'll call stupidly safe. They have these right. bulbous round bottoms and everything. And you guys are just not going to learn to cope if you haven't had a chance to dodge a missile with a pointy end that your sister or friend threw. You know, that's, it, that's your sibling or, or, your, or, your, or your school friends threw. But oh, yeah. There were literally thousands upon thousands of injuries the numbers are varied and crazy they were banned in the united states and canada and also um if you if you pull up the wiki you're going to see all of the all of the stats and and are in there they were banned in the u.s and canada but they are still legal currently in the european union and and they wow they drink tougher beer over there so you know if you're gonna not only that you know why that is it's because europe is not idiot proof that's it's why not idiot proof. If you go to the, the sea cliffs in Northern Ireland and Ireland, there are no fences to keep you from falling off the cliff. They figure you're smart enough to know that's a cliff and you shouldn't take any more steps. And yeah. that's it. And if you do, then good riddance to you. <laughs> so yeah, they, well, I, I, I think you know they, they have a point. You know, you may as well get it, get it up. You know, take you on your faith. But um, so yeah, we we had the lawn darts. Um, there were lots of like I said, all kinds. There is a toy that we reimagined using uh, horse chestnuts from from the trees. Paula, I'll, you're gonna hear my sister start to laugh. I'm gonna try to get through this, okay? <laughs> Okay. One of the toys, and it was made by a company we're going to discuss next, was called Clackers. And Clackers oh, yes. were um, two very heavy gla- glass balls. And they were weighted very, quite a bit. And they were attached by a string. And, and you basically would, each of you had a set, and you were trying to knock the other one out of the other one's hand you're trying to using the thing so you're basically winging a bolo which is a south american weapon and we used to do this with the chestnuts we used to get the horse chestnuts you know carve or drill a get a hole through them and put them on the ends of string and do the same thing but these balls were really heavy and the problem with these balls is that um they are your balls (laughs) Okay, I'm gonna get to uh, this yes. with a straight face. Types okay. of injuries from quackers were black eyes, nosebleeds, and testicular trauma. Wow. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm really ten in here. I'm just kind of <laughs> who did them overhand? I mean, what <laughs> wait, wait. Happen? I'm 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 actually I'm I'm reimagining that the tagline would be you have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what will be left, I suppose. So yeah. Now were, the, were those made by Whammo? They were made by Whammo. They were. I thought so. They were made by. And when you stop and think about all the toys that could hurt you, that's the name that comes up probably Whammo. more than any other. When you stop and think about it. Okay, so we had Mattel, we had Hasbro, we had Kenner, we had all these different brands, Milton and Bradley then we had did the games. Whammo. Yeah. Whammo. <laughs> Whammo tried to end us. Toys. So, it would have to be Whammo, definitely. It really did. I, I, there was like one or two things I was surprised Whammo didn't make, but for the most part, they came through with with like, you know, really. Try. The first thing I thought of with Whammo was super elastic bubble plastic. Oh, my God. Which is chemical warfare at its best. Brain cells. Also. Outlawed in Canada. Canada's not having any of this. They're not. They're not letting us. Oh, know. those poor Canadian children. They don't know what they were missing. Our gentle neighbors to the north. Our gentle neighbors to the north. I bet you they didn't have dipa flower either. Oh God, dipa flower. Dipa flower was. We had that. I remember. And and when yes, I looked it up after we had a conversation, when I looked it up, 
when I saw the box, this probably been what I'm 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 55. It's probably been 40. Seven years or more since I I I could I smelled the smell immediately in my head. My oh, my yeah. olfactory memory kicked right in. So even after forty five plus years, as soon as I saw the box, I'm like, oh god, that smell. Zip it was flower. more noxious than airplane glow. It was and polyester probably, resin. Probably more damaging. The the I it probably had some tooling in it too. It was toxic polyester resin was was the okay. reason it which I mean if the seventies weren't toxic enough with polyester then we had to add this, um and that was that was actually Milton Bradley that that got Dippa Flower out oddly we can you know the Whammo That's people it. are innocent in the Dippa Flower thing, um and uh, polyester we wore it we drank out of it we dipped wires into it and made flowers and we inhaled it and we inhaled it explains a lot exactly. But Wamo also were were um uh well Wamo gave us the frisbee. Wamo gave us uh the mass mac the mass marketed rather hula hoop, um mm -hmm. silly string. I don't even know what's in that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Whenever, have you ever have you touched it? It's like cold to the touch, probably from the aerosol in the can, and it's kind of slimy. And, oh yeah, and it comes out at an alarming rate. And it's, I don't know, all I can figure out, it's like canned panic. <laughs> it's, yeah. The least string is yeah. canned panic. I think it was really popular when kids would do like, bat, uh, not Batman, Spider-Man costumes. Oh, sure, they have yeah. some silly okay. string and a Spider-Man costume. Your outfit was complete. That was the ultimate accessory for well, a Spider-Man costume. You got to admit that. That is, that is the ultimate accessory. Well, they, they kind of mellowed out because they gave us the kinder, gentler hacky sack. And my personal oh, favorite from sad. from uh, from Whammo is the Super Ball. Remember the Super Ball? We used to call them Super Pinkies because they were this oh, pink, yes. pink rubber ball, which also made an eraser in a pinch. And if you, you know, you bounced it, don't do it in the house. That's basically how you get punished forever is if you bounce because that thing's going to ricochet like a pinball all over, the, all over the place. And I remember, you know, like kids would, you know, with rough house, you you get that thing and you bounce it as high as you could. And if you see if you can get it over the telephone wire, that was like right. the, the benchmarks. But, well, then you involve the angry neighbor as well. So that's a an added plus to the danger of some of these toys is who you were going to piss off. Megalina. While you were doing it. Oh yeah. Oh, I once got a frisbee caught in the rose bushes out in front of Megalina's house. Uh oh. Well, you know, that's when the triple jeopardy rule went into play. You know, a lot of people are familiar <laughs> with double jeopardy. Triple jeopardy right. in our neighborhood went like this. Accidentally throw a Frisbee into the lady across the street's uh, rose bushes. Now, the lady across the street came over on the boat from Sicily with our grandmother. And all of these houses are close. It's a small side street in a little suburb, harbor town kind of place. And um, we go out. If, you, if she caught you in the rose bush, Miguelina would yell at you and swat you because you did that then it took a village and and the village got mad so you know and then you, know, you got you, you caught hell from Miguelina, and then you know you off you went with your frisbee next thing you know your grandmother's knocking on the window come here and then she you know you get in there and she's mad because Miguelina called her on the phone in the pr space it took you to go across the street back into your own yard and now she's mad because you went into her friend's rosebud and you caught hell from her personal shame personal her shame part. and then That's when your right. parents got home the you grandmother got it tells the parent it was triple jeopardy. It was triple jeopardy. Exactly. You got it from a neighbor who called your grandmother, who then told your parents, and you were just screwed. And you know, right. unlike today, where if the teacher calls the parents, then the parents come in and they sue the teacher. So right. it was crazy. Well, you know, it, we had a lot of casting of funny characters in the neighborhood. One thing we didn't have from the Whammo collection of what I'll call water hazards is we had neither. The at least in my recollection, correct me if I'm wrong. The water wiggle, and no, we did not have a water wiggle, and I don't remember a slip and slide. Actually, we did have a slip and slide. Might have been gone. Probably the reason you don't remember it <laughs> is because somebody probably got hurt on it enough to have Same it gone that. by the time you. Because there were nine years between us, so yes. yeah, it should be. When good. you look at that and you say, I think they learned a few things in that nine years, which is basically to get rid of the, the slip, slip and slide. And slide. <laughs> Let's ditch this. And we thing. talked about uh, some of these some of these toys like slip and slides. Um, the game of Twister is a good one. 
um, at the hula hoops and and. Um, have you played the, Twister as an adult? Yes, I have. <laughs> That's well, I mean, there's no. <laughs> no, there's two ways you can play Twister as an adult. You can play adult Twister and we're not going to get into that. It's not that kind mm -hmm. of show. But there's also playing Twister as an adult, which is basically a 100 percent surefire way to get yourself into chiropractor. It's, it's exactly that's that's a twist and shout as you as you. That's right. We talked about the twist and shout category twist and shout of, category. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure that there are a lot of chiropractors that are uh, treating Twister people today who don't Twister even injuries. remember that the reason why their backs and necks are so screwed up is because of some of these things that we played with as kids. I mean, yeah. we had pogo sticks. Oh, my God. Trampolines. Trampolines and, are still a and thing. stilts that were oh. nowhere near, you know, what stilts are engineered to be now. And they don't market them for little kids. And then there were those things that looked like flower pots with strings. Romper that, stompers. Yeah. From romper, yeah. marketed from romp, Romper Room, which was a very popular children's show way, way back exactly. in the day. Exactly. So those, those were kind of crazy because you got to clop around like you had hooves, but they looked like little margarine tubs. <laughs> they looked like margarine exactly. tubs. They did look like margarine With plastic tubs. strings. And, you know, you guys were kind of normal, but I was a fat kid. And I got news. Some of those things groaned under, you know, fat kid weight. And it was well, like, let's put it with a chubby child. It wasn't the best the toy. Three for you. Degatti sisters had many gifts, but <laughs> Grace was not one of them. Oh Lord, yeah. No. None of us were were ballerinas or not you know, intentionally. <laughs> um Maria was always really good, like with the bike rodeo stuff. That so, that was her claim skier. to fame as an a kid. excellent skier. Yeah, she was and she was an excellent skier. Yeah. We're not going to talk about what kind of skier you were. Um the I, I, I would have been guy. good if I had pretty much sums it up if we're talking nostalgia you remember the wide world of sports agony of defeat that's me skiing i do i yeah, remember that it's not good i remember the egg beater you did in, in front of Yagu my eyes valley and, at yep, Yagu valley like rhode island yeah <laughs> it's not even a mountain it's a hill it's it's a a rope there were three-year-olds with no poles just flying by me while i'm laying there in agony because i ended up twisting myself into a oh it still hurts it still hurts when i think about it yeah, I'm not a good skier. I was always a good swimmer, though. Good swimmer. That's good. And, and good you're skater. a good skater, too. Good swimmer and a good but... skater. And and you you were always a good swimmer, good surfer. None of us can throw or catch anything. Don't do no, it. No, not Don't much. Throw <laughs> yeah, it, that, that was, you know, very unsuccessful. Usually, but... it, 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 ended, it, it ended badly. But so the slip for, and slide. For three, for three kids who weren't really, you know, who grew up with these toys and weren't really... Um, Athletic. Most, most athletic kids on the block. Um, nobody broke anything until they were teenagers, at least. Yeah. So I, that's kind of amazing. I think this is no really stitches or breaks. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, is you could, let's be honest, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what era you grew up in. You can hurt yourself with pretty much anything if you're, if you, if your clutch factor is high enough. I, right. I'm but not the gonna... difference is, there was an array of things that they were just begging you to use. They really to do were it. trying to take us out. Well, the slip and slide was was manufactured uh, up until 1991, and uh, injuries from the slip and slide included bone breaks, neck injuries, and paralysis. And we brought up the water wiggle. The water wiggle was basically a hose that the water pressure just cursed through like a, a runaway hose, and it had a little plastic top on it with a nozzle and it spun water out of the top and it just danced around based on the water pressure. That was responsible for um, concussions because people were getting bonked with it. And in two, not one, but two horrific cases. And I'd like to point out that these cases were three years apart, 1975 and 1978. In both of those years, unfortunately, the water wiggle caused fatalities where the nozzle somehow, I don't know how, got lodged in the mouth of a very young child who 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 drowned because they got fire hose basically with this thing and but the thing is, is i just want to know one thing the, the case in 1975 and the case in 1978 were they from the same family 
Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I don't believe so. <laughs> But because that was, I mean, ridiculous. You know, well, I mean, it really does seem like it it's once. an outside. Isn't once enough? Yeah, you know it, it. But I mean, it happens once. Wouldn't you say, oh, okay, maybe we should redesign something so it doesn't do whatever it did that did that? But no, three years later, almost identical case. That's bizarre. It really is strange, and it's tragic too. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. Now coupling in with these like you know not so klutz friendly toys and uh like none of them were friendly to me because i'm i'm still a klutz I'm, I'm still a wicked klutz I'm, I'm always falling all over everything but um was the swing wing and it actually was a little before my time but the swing wing was um and it's swing wing and it was marketed from 1960 and it was discontinued in 1970. But the problem is, even though I was born in 68 and you would think, you know, I wouldn't know something like this because I'd only be two when it was discontinued. You're assuming that when a toy was discontinued, that our parents threw it out. That's not always the case. Those no, lawn no, darts no. are still in Maria's <laughs> garage. I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> you know, we never got it's rid somewhere. of somewhere. And, and, and That's the, right. the swing wing was basically a plastic beanie looking helmet that you strapped on your head. And at the top of the beanie was an apex with a long plastic leash and a ball. And the idea was to put this stupid hat on your stupid head and rotate your neck to get the, the top of the, the ball spinning. And you can look that one up online and it's called a swing wing. And apparently neck injuries and whiplash. Who Gee, didn't see I that coming? Why. What a surprise. Let's put that in the twist and shout category, shall we? Absolutely. In need of chiropractic care for the rest of your life. But to be fair, you know, if you're if you're a, a class A accident prone klutz, and I'm I've got my hand raised uh here for that. Um <laughs> and uh, you keep chuckling when you hear what I'm gonna say next. It can be you can get terminal injuries, you know, from just about anything. I mean, I'm not saying I never knew anybody who ever got taken out by a backhand or a golf club, but it's happened in our family. <clears throat> <laughs> yes tennis backhand yeah, and, and, and golf club where you're where you're i may have died on this oh, ropes a couple of times sailboat boom i've got oh, a, i had boy, trouble getting out of the way boom, fast enough i got a sailboat boom and then uh the crack at the back of the head and another one was um there was that summer i looked like uh the planet jupiter because i had this gash on the side of my neck that looked like the great spot of jupiter from when shirley threw the bat when we were playing like sandlot baseball. Oh, you got hit with the bat that time. Yeah. And oh yeah. The golf Charlie club. Charlie threw the bat. And the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Stitches with the golf club. I was 15 then. That's yeah. That's it's another still, story too. Yeah. But that's, still. That's a kid thing. Yeah. And didn't she take that's a backhand in the throat? About tennis, I a did. tennis ball to the throat? I did, where the most patient man on earth lost his patience with me. That's how bad of a tennis player I am. You're terrible And athlete. he just shot a backhand and didn't have any idea it was going to land square in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so and it's crazy stuff. But and I, mean, I live to tell the tale. So I think you were the only one who got kid stitches, though, of the three of us, because I never got I think stitches so. as a kid. I did not get kid stitches. And and nope. I know there were other kids in, in our neighborhood. I'm only going to say first names, but Wayne from up the street, if, if you know us and you know our neighborhood, you know exactly what we're talking about, went off the seawall over down by the tides. Oh, yeah. And, and, and he has, he ended up with like a horseshoe in his head because he hit the rock when he, when he hit the water. So mm -hmm. it was one of those, you dive into the water and, and it's exactly what your parents warned you would happen if you did that. And he's lucky he, he not only wasn't paralyzed, he grew up to be a, a productive and 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 delightful member of society but he's also got a horseshoe scar in his head because he bailed off a seawall when he was like you know 11 or however old he was and and that kind of things so you know we have the athletic toys usually get all the credit for for being dangerous <laughs> and and we've talked about some of the chemical warfare but one of the other things that 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 it, that was a little crazy is um hot stuff we oh have, yeah i'm burning for you the, first of all wood burning the, wood burning easy bake ovens easy bake oven wood burning they had to reformulate uh the easy bake oven a few times it, it came out in 1963 uh, and it was originally made by kenner and in mm -hmm. 1991 uh hasbro nice rhode island company um they uh they 
re retooled it and and kind of upgraded it for for the times. But um, they had to recall almost one million. It was nine hundred eighty five thousand Easy Bake Oven recalls because a five year old in two thousand seven lost a finger to a burn going necrotic. That was from the element or the whatever, because I don't think they had light bulbs in them then. When we were kids, it was a light bulb. I remember that thing. It was teal. It was this big, ugly, teal, square oven looking thing. It looked. Oh, yeah. It looked like something that wanted to hurt you. It really did. I have a carrying machine that looks like that, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the Easy Bake Oven was far more dangerous. It really, yeah. I don't know. Though. There's that pointy thing in the Keurig thing. Just be careful when you slam that <laughs> bit down on, on, on the K-cup. You know, don't don't hurt yourself. But yeah, the it's Easy okay. Bake Oven. I'm all grown oven, up now. I know the dangers. Yeah. Well, wood burning is still, is still a thing. Actually, I'm going to put a little plug in here for an awesome lady uh, who's a good friend of mine named Jasmine who has a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, shop called scared timber look her up on social media she does wood burning she does fantastic work i love her medusa stuff it's amazing um nice. but she is a grown-up mostly <laughs> you know <laughs> as we are mostly grown like if you're mostly a grown-up i'm kind of mostly a grown-up but, but wood burning you know they just hand us this stuff we, we had free range. We were in single digit ages and we had free range for to, you know, for soldering irons, wood burners and whatever the hell else that we could get our hands on. And we did wood burning. And and for the most part, none of us died. But that that was that was the level of of of, of frightening. And they trusted us with there was um a couple of types of, of toys that were very popular were the ones where you could mold either rubber play or actually gummy edible things oh god and you know one of them is the creepy crawlies and there's a couple incredible of incredible edibles incredible edibles and and these these were all things you can look up creepy crawlies incredible edibles the, but, the best one though is the one that you found well that i think Jeff, let's jeffrey up. dahmer must have played with <laughs> before we get to jeffrey dahmer let's go to the renfield version the renfield, oh, the renfield. Version. now mind the you buttons? this is uh, it was called Delicious Detestables. Yes. And Delicious Detestables, all of these, the Creepy Crawlies, Delicious Detestables, and the one we're going to talk about in a moment, all of them had some kind of heating element. And it, apparently the average was between 500 and 600 degrees to to take the mixture of whatever the goo was, you know. And if, if anybody out there is a candy maker or if you bake and everything, you know, you know about hardball and softball stage. And and you have to heat sugar up to like ridiculous tempers. I get nervous every time I make flan because I'm afraid of the caramel. I really am. <laughs> I'm terrified of it because if that stuff splashes on me, I'm going to be maimed for life. So, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of hot sugar. And uh, but, you know, it, but they had delicious detestables, which was another candy molding gooey glop thing that was at like some nuclear temperature, thermonuclear temperature. And it made snakes and spiders. Cause uh, I don't know about you, Paulo. I just can't wait to eat a gummer spider. And, That's you know, right. But the Palmetto best bug sized roaches. Right. Sure. You know, but the best part was the same company that, that put together all of these uh, lovely delights had one called Dr. Dreadful and the, <laughs> the <laughs> luscious limbs. And then uh, this kit, you had the same, like, you know, murderously hot, hot plate cooker, whatever it was. And you had molds for gummy candy. So you were to eat these. Right. But they were body parts. That's right. You get to be, pretend you were a cannibal. And eat ears. And tootsies and, <laughs> and you know. Legs you and <laughs> arms. and Oh, my gosh. How does a parent look at that and go, that's for my kid? You got to get that kid in therapy. If Quick. you look at the package, that kid looks like he could be the child version of Jeffrey Dahmer. I have no doubt. I and have there's no a reason doubt. for that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And and another one was the, um, and this was put out by uh, a company, um, uh, the Witch Doctor Head Shrinker Kit. And uh, oh, it, yeah, it was uh, another company put that out. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of it. The Witch Doctor Head a Pressman Pressman Company, Witch Doctor Head Shrinker Kit. And it included molds, something called a mixing cauldron. 
And in addition to the molding medium, you also had, and this is a quote from the box, petrifying potion. And you made molds Excellent. that were, you know, probably about the size of uh, of maybe like, I don't know, a baseball or a softball uh, of, of like heads. But after right. it was treated with the petrifying potion and you let it and you unmolded it, it dried out and shrunk. And exactly. Was, that was another polyvinyl acetate. And it would wizen right. down to something that you could probably easily carry on a keychain. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it started out the size of a baseball or bigger. And this was and, probably like a precursor to the um, uh, shrinky dinks. Oh, things yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Shrinky dinks were tough. So we've we've gone over like this, this, this all these hazards that are, were obviously we had easy bake ovens, wood burning kits, and like you know giant hot plates cooking up limbs and things to burn us. We had you know ballistics. There was even a toy, and this is a fun one if you want to look this one up. It's one word: six finger. Six finger was a cap gun that looked like a hand pointing a gun. I'm not really sure the point of this. But it was right. apparently extremely powerful and potent. It was a cap gun, but it was it was very uh, it was it was very, for the debonair child who wanted to do like the James Bond kind of thing, I guess, and everything. So we've talked about ballistics, water hazards, you know, a number of chiropractic delights, uh, you know, spinal injuries from from slipping and sliding and climbing on things and 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 falling and and whatever that beanie did to everyone's neck. We haven't talked about mental injury. We haven't mental talked injury. about <laughs> mental about about mental scars, and the most simple, I think, uh, the premier, you know, uh, psychologically disturbing toy of all time has got to be the Jack in the Box. That's rotten. <laughs> I think that's a rotten thing to do to a kid. You know. Wow. It, yeah, Su surprise. <laughs> surprise. You know, it's like, imagine, you know, you're a kid, the first time you do it, I, I'm not a parent. And and I don't know, do you ever have a Jack, Jack in a Box? I don't have? believe I did that. I don't her. think you did, because you know what? You are fundamentally a nice person. And this is not the kind of thing you do to kids. I'm just trying to think of like, what kind of sicko says, oh, you see that four-year-old? Watch this. And that's their own flesh and blood. And they hand them a jack in the box. The kids see the pretty box and it makes them, they do the thing and they go ding, 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 ding. ding. And they, you know, the kid's happy. As well. And all of a sudden this thing goes blah out of it. <laughs> and then the kid's got a nervous condition right. for the rest of their that's life. Years of, years of therapy for some of these toys. <laughs> Why is Howard under the couch when he hears the ice cream? Truck? I don't know. You know, exactly. <laughs> It's it's crazy. And so there I think there's a number of, of what I'll say are psychologically scarring toys. Well, and you know, or games. you could play them with psychologically scarring people. I can remember. So you've met dreading, the rest of the family. <laughs> well, I can remember dreading playing Monopoly with our cousin Santo, who basically used to be the banker and he'd charge interest and he'd make up his own rules to the game. And you could never win against Santo. Plus, you know, he was three years older than me. And um, I know someone was, else like that. He was always, always just cleaning up on the hotels and everything else. And and, and they did the I same. Did, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, it was, was, yeah, that was traumatic. But I, I think the most, well, now we had board game, board game issues in our family. <laughs> Oh yeah, we were a game playing family. We were we a game. See, we weren't athletes. We were academics, I guess. You know, we were more of an intellectual academic family. Not to say we're so smart, because trust me, we're packed full of idiots like everybody else's family. But um, and and mo most of the time it's me. So I, I like, you know. And, but the thing is, is that you know, we we did more time like with playing games and and uh, with with apologies to to the brilliant and still uh, relevant Zay Frank. Um, Paula is the Scrabble jackass of the family. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and and, uh, and and you know, we played games like Scrabble. When Trivial Pursuit became a thing, there were family feuds over that game. We're a family of artists that couldn't play Pictionary without getting into a fight, which was great. We were very competitive. Very competitive. So much so that I would have to put Scrabble under the mental injury thing. And I'll tell you why. Because you read when the Scrabble I was about, Pictionary in the toilet. <laughs> no, when I was about, psh, you're not supposed to know. <laughs> When I was about 12, I got to the point where 
um, mom and dad were teaching me how to play Scrabble. And by the time I was 12, I could beat them both. And you've heard of people being sore losers. I was almost like a sore winner. I would bloat <laughs> when I won because they made so much of telling me, well, this is a game that grownups play and it's difficult and we're not going to let you win. Right. So I they won never those let games us win legitimately. Anything. No, they didn't. And actually, that that's a good thing. You can always yeah. do open games. You can always teach kids. But I, I really don't think that you you gain anything by letting a kid win. And I, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with them on that. Yeah, I, I actually am. I think that was a good thing because. Uh, but but dad never taught me yeah. to play chess. He taught because me because he was punishing me oh. for beating him at Scrabble. Yeah, that's what that was. That's what that was all about. He didn't wow. want me to start beating him at his favorite game. <laughs> Now I have played chess with dad. Dad taught me to play chess. I, I suck, by the way. I'm st I stink at it. I like it kind of sometimes, but I, I I'm not great at it. Um, I'm I'm okay, but I I and I'm 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 good at Scrabble. I've never beaten you. It's at that's that should be that should be said. You can gloat about that. I have never beaten you in Scrabble. I, we've had close games, but I have never actually in a one on one. No, you haven't actually. I've have never you? beat. Nope. And and I probably never will. But I always enjoy playing with you because it's a fun game. But um, and, and I've never beaten dad or Santo in chess. That's just impossible. Absolutely. I've taught impossible. a lot of people to our cousin to Santa. Beat me. When somebody gets gets, you know, a couple of games under their belt with me and they don't win. I tell them if you want, we'll play some open games and I will teach you how to beat me. And I've taught several people how to beat me. Yeah, I, I, I don't doubt it, you know, and it helps. I learned a lot happening. going from living room Scrabble to competitive Scrabble, which I only dabbled in once. And I, I couldn't believe the difference in how people played oh, when yeah. they were competitive players. There are a whole nother world out there. The uh, book Word Freak. Yes, you. I was just going to bring that up. You, you had me read that. And yeah, it's a tremendous Stephen book. Fattis, a Word terrific Freak. book. I, I met some of those people when I played in Danbury, and they're nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole as I say in New Bedford, it's a whole nother story. But you know, mm -hmm. um, outside of Jack in the Box, I think the and and you know our our famous competitive. Uh, trivia and and parlor game incidents like you know we couldn't just play charades like everybody else we had to like you know play pictionary where you know it's it's like three da vinci's and a you know and, and, and like mom was shading her pictures you know when she would play <laughs> pictionary she was shading her pictures and she's like you know try, and, and dad's giving you a lecture well i can't see what that is there's no perspective because our, our dad was as an art teacher <laughs> was an art teacher and you know <laughs> so we, we're all it, it, and it's like nobody got drawings done on time because we're sitting there trying to make the mona lisa well you know somebody else is just trying to go light bulb it's a light bulb you know <laughs> we're trying to figure out what the hell which was the opposite of what used to happen at my friend dan's house when his sisters would play they almost had like a twin speak thing going on and i can remember one time we're playing as adults we're playing um pictionary with his sisters up in vermont one of them puts one line down on the paper, one line, and the other one goes gazebo. Okay. What is that? Uh, it was that, right. That that, that that's fits exactly in with our podcast. That's paranormal right there. <laughs> you got it. But they were also, Some I think, these just shouldn't the, be <laughs> the Jack in the Box. I think, and and this is going to be one of our final points. The Jack in the Box, uh, which by the way g gets recalled on the regular because apparently several versions of them have had like lots of itty bitty little parts that small people suck up and inhale, um, which is strange because I think once it did its thing, I don't think I'd get anywhere near it. But that's just me. Um, you know, as for older kids, there were there were I think two games that were absolutely designed again to give you like a lifetime nervous condition, were perfection. And operation. Ooh. Yeah. Operation. I loved operation. We I remember operation. And operation. If you, and if you remove I, funny bone. Yeah. <laughs> well, for, for for those youngsters listening that are not familiar with operation, you can look up and see what the game board looked like. It was basically a box that had this like really doofy looking nude naked man on it, but he didn't have any of you know the important parts. 
he had the lesser important oh parts, he had like plenty of important parts funny but he bones. just didn't have any dirty parts yes that's true he had no dirty parts he and, was a g-rated uh, naked man he was a, you know what so was ken as in the doll <laughs> not your <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, it's, we were big on 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 NG rated, they, and, and this is why you get a whole generation of women that are fascinated because we grew up thinking there was nothing there. When we saw something there, we just freaked out. Um, but the operation um, required, I think, a, two D batteries at least. It, it required D oh, yeah. batteries. They were they were it had a, a serious amount of voltage to it for a game. And when you had the D batteries in it, and you had um, there was a metal tweezer. And all of the small recesses that held impossibly tiny little things like remember the ribs were the worst. And, you know, oh, yeah. it was like the funny bone was like, you know, it was the humorous bone. And what you had mm -hmm. to do was you had to very gingerly and delicately, you had to get your tweezers in that little recess and pull out the itty bitty little plastic bone without touching the sides. Because if you did, you got electrocuted. That's right. The nose would light up and it would go. Yeah, not only did it <laughs> did the nose light up, a bright red nose, and not only did it go or it made some kind of like other obnoxious noise, it right. shot, a, shot a voltage bolt up your arm. Yeah. So, you know, what if you play? One reason that was not my favorite game. Yeah, that was crazy. Now, perfection was just sort of like, you know, a puzzle field and in this one i don't believe was or i think there may be a, a electric versions or whatever you push it down and you put all these you have all these little impossible shapes like little stars little squares little triangles and there's about i don't know 30 of them or however many there are i, I don't know i didn't count but you push you dump them all out onto the table and mix them up and then there are all these little tiny things and then you take the the game and you push down the, the bed of the game where all the recesses are and the object is you start to hear it tick. Now, I watched <laughs> enough movies that when I hear something going, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I don't own one of those alarm clocks that does that. I've watched too many, too many Acme things explode on cartoons that were there's, ticking. There's only one thing that ticking means, and that is that something is about to happen exactly i am so not cool with that so you you're, you're rushing to get this all the little shapes and all the little holes because you got to figure out where the star is and everything. and as you're doing it it's filling up eventually if you do not get them all in there and hit the whatever the stop thing is it just kind of goes boing and everything goes everywhere and it's it's so you're 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 rapidly trying you're giving yourself a nervous breakdown trying to play this game. And they called it perfection. They should have called it medication is what you need. You know, you know so I wonder if it was uh, basically invented by somebody who used to be on a detonation squad. And he <laughs> wanted something fun to do for his kids. You know, <laughs> that's the guy you need invented. <laughs> something they could share together and have some family fun. So I'm, I'm going to assume that the guy who who um, who did perfect had to be, and, and somewhere there's a mad scientist who thought that shrinking heads with with uh, polyvinyl acetate. Oh, and, oh, but there were the other mad scientist toys like chemistry, chemistry sets. sets. Yeah, yeah, there were erector sets. There were chemistry sets. There were all these things that were like, oh, let's make a rocket. You know, <laughs> there was a lot of that going on. Yeah, and this is crazy. Well, some of was... us didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling. You. Well, the same company that made um, the uh, chemistry sets made the uranium set. Oh my! No, that was a thing. <laughs> I'm I'm tight. You can hear me typing. I that's I just, right. I, it was the atomic. It was. It was fun Some and uranium kind of right and it, like, i'm looking know, it's the fission kit <laughs> the atomic energy lab and it was uh, it was mm -hmm. made by a company called gilbert and it was marketed actually it's before both of our times it was marketed in 1950 and it was a a chemistry set or a a the gilbert you can if you look up um gilbert atomic energy lab you will see that it was this suitcase with uranium 238 in it. Because, <laughs> you know, 
that's cool. And it had four samples of uranium bearing ores. And I think that's a bad idea. And, and you also got your own Geiger counter with it, which in the 50s may be handy. I don't know. Because, you know, it was crazy. So to sum it up, um, one of the last things I looked at as as facts was I um I I looked for for some some numbers on what the most dangerous toys are. And the more comprehensive and detailed list was again, these are all vintage toys. So this is from 1996. I am sure those hoverboards are probably way at the top of this list now. Cause every time I watch that funny home video thing, you know, somebody on a hoverboard, you know, giving themselves, you know, that's right, a spinal injury. Um, but this is nine, the the this is from 1996, and most of these toys were 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 either active or shortly discontinued in that 20 year frame around that area. So the most injurious toys, according to the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission, in 1996, I'm going to go out on a limb. What do you think the most dangerous toy was? What what toy causes the most injuries across the board? I had said a jump rope just because I was trying to think out of the box. You were too we far out of the box. Before. It's balloons. People are inhaling them. People are having them pop in their face and cause injuries. And I mean, I don't know. I, I have to admit, if, when I blow up a balloon, when it's starting to get like really clear, I get a little nervous. I don't want it to pop in my face. I really don't. But, you know, nobody does. But the, the second most injurious toy to children in 1996 was tricycles. And that makes Ooh. some sense. And, and of course, uh, the third uh, were various choking hazards, which is why you always have all these little little pieces. You can't, like, operation. I mean, the pieces were small. You couldn't have all those warnings that don't give this to a kid under such and such. But um, of all the types of injuries from all the types of toys, the most common toy injury is lacerations. So everybody's oh, yeah. placing themselves on toys. So we've got burns from we sur let's look at what we survived. Uh we survived burns from from wood burning kits, various cookers, the easy bake oven. We didn't get chemically altered. Well, not until we were teenagers. Um by stuff, <laughs> by stuff like, you know, the witch doctor head shrinker kit, that dip of flour, toxic polyester resin, inhaling things like super elastic bubble plastic. And I'm sorry to report to the nice Wemo people. And you can still go on Wemo is still a thing. You can go to the website and and see uh, both uh, nostalgic and current products. Um, but I'm sorry, Wemo, we survived. Also, we did it without a helmet or seat belt. True. Well, and that mom's right hand was our seat belt. She karate chop you right into the thing. Absolutely, and but we survived a lot. I mean, in this in this helmeted nerf soft world that <laughs> children are growing up with now they're growing up in a soft comfy safe place that they're going to get a very rude awakening when the rest of the world out there really comes at them and causes whiplash and mental and physical injury and everything else they're just not going to be ready for it the way we were no, we we were definitely well. Apparently, you know, between uh, you know, these some of these ballistics toys and 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 maybe like you know the detonation squad designing us a puzzle game, I think we were uniquely suited to all of that. That's right. <laughs> we were trained by the best. You know, it, it was crazy. But I, I gotta say, like when I read the the bits about about the water wiggle, uh, that there were you know there was a fatality in 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 1975, and then a fatality again in 1978 and and we've, we've said a lot of funny stuff and 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 all of that but that certainly isn't funny and I, I jest only slightly when i yeah they are soft this whole generation is they can't cope but and we, they weren't raised dodging lawn darts but if it means or climbing trees or climbing trees <laughs> but if it means the difference between a second fatality or or, or a kid not getting injured that they're going to in this, you know, have their like, you know, soft little toys. I'd rather see that. But well, it really makes you think when you look back at the list of, of all of these things, what were they thinking? Really? Exactly. Well, these are the same people who were like, you know, feeding us baby bottles with cigarettes in their hands. And these that was just <laughs> what that was what that generation did. 
you know, granted by by timeline, I'm Generation X because I was born in 1968, and I think 64 is the cutoff. But it should be noted that a my parents are old enough to be my grandparents. You're welcome, mom. That's and, true. And also um, that my sisters are boomers. Right. And so technically, I am not a baby boomer by chronology, but I am a baby boomer by family culture. Culturally. Culturally, I'm You're- a boomer. Okay, boomer. You're a cultural boomer. I'm a cultural okay, boomer. boomer, which means I dodged lawn darts too. <laughs> That's right. You did. I did. And you and, got and all I, the leftover toys because they were still in the basement and the shed. They're still in the basement and the shed. Have you been over there? You Absolutely. Know, they're still in the basement and the shed. So, so folks, hug your children. <laughs> Try not to get them a head shrink or can't do not hand them a wood burning <laughs> tool until they're older and, and everything, you know, do not, do not try to set them on fire. And when you hug them, don't hug them too tight. Right. And you it just might goes, injure them. You might injure them. They, they're, they're, they are a little soft. And it goes without saying that uh, I, I want to thank my sister for coming on and, and having a little fun talking about some of these crazy stories and, and crazy stuff. But she was a blast to grow up with. You were more fun than lawn darts. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, you were like my baby. Oh, well. I was I, nine I, when you were born and um, I was mommy's little helper. Oh, there you go. Well, you're still a Scrabble jackass, but I love you anyway. <laughs> All right, folks. And as always, thanks for listening. And remember, Stay kooky out there. Thank you for listening to Macabre World. You can find us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com.